Greenbrier's Elva Zona Hester, the ghost who solved her own murder. In the heart of rural Greenbrier County, nestled within the rugged terrain of West Virginia, the late 19th century was an era where time seemed to stand still. This remote region, characterized by its rolling hills and isolated communities, was home to the Hester family, who lived a quiet and unassuming life in this idyllic but unforgiving landscape. At the center of our tale is the enigmatic figure of Elva Zona Hester, a woman whose life would be cut tragically short under circumstances as eerie as the West Virginia night itself. Zona, as she was known among friends and family, was a young woman of uncommon beauty, her striking features and graceful demeanor making her the subject of admiration among the locals. However, her life took a most unexpected and sinister turn one cold January day in 1897. Sona had entered into matrimony with a man named Erasmus Stribling Trout Shoe, a transplant to the area who had recently moved to Greenbrier County. Erasmus was a quiet, somewhat mysterious figure and his marriage to Zona raised more than a few eyebrows in the tight-knit community. While many questioned the circumstances surrounding their union, Zona appeared to be deeply in love with her husband. Yet, this love would soon lead to her tragic demise. On that fateful winter day, Zona was found dead in her home. Her lifeless body lay sprawled on her bedroom floor, her once vibrant eyes now cold and empty. The initial belief was that Zona had met her end due to natural causes or a tragic accident. It was not uncommon in those times for people to pass away suddenly and many were all too familiar with the unforgiving grip of disease and accidents in this rugged part of the country. However, it was not just Zona's death that sent shivers down the spines of those who knew her. It was the peculiar behavior of her husband, Erasmus, in the aftermath of her passing that raised the first whispers of suspicion. At her wake, Erasmus exhibited a disturbing degree of possessiveness over his wife's body. He insisted on preparing her for the viewing himself, going so far as to dress her in a high-necked gown with a scarf that concealed her neck. This unusual display sent shockwaves through the mourners, who found Erasmus's actions not only unsettling, but highly inappropriate. Questions swirled in hushed conversations. Why would a husband be so adamant about handling the body of his deceased wife? What was he hiding beneath that scarf? In the wake of Elva Zona Hester's mysterious death, the small community of Greenbrier County found itself grappling with a chilling sense of unease. While the circumstances surrounding her passing were unsettling, it was the events that followed that would send shockwaves through the region, shaking the very foundations of belief and skepticism. Mary Jane Hester, Zona's mother, was an integral figure in this unfolding drama. A woman of strong faith and unwavering determination, she would become the driving force behind a series of events that would eventually lead to the unraveling of a dark and sinister secret. As days turned into weeks, Mary Jane's grief began to manifest itself in a most unusual manner. 
She claimed that her beloved daughter was visiting her in the dead of night, appearing as a ghostly presence at the foot of her bed. These spectral visitations, she insisted, were not mere dreams or figments of her imagination, but genuine encounters with the spirit of Zoma. <sighs> According to Mary Jane's accounts, during these eerie nocturnal visits, Sona's ghost allegedly revealed the shocking truth about her own demise. The details provided by the spectral apparition were as unsettling as they were damning. Sona's ethereal form accused Erasmus of having strangled her to death. was divided in its response to Mary Jane's claims. Some dismissed her accounts as the ravings of a grief-stricken mother, desperate for solace in the face of her daughter's untimely death. Others, however, were not so quick to dismiss her words. In an era where belief in the supernatural still held sway over the hearts and minds of many, the idea that the dead could communicate with the living was not entirely beyond the realm of possibility. This division of belief set the stage for a series of events that would bring the mystery of Zona's death to the forefront of public attention. Mary Jane's unwavering insistence on her daughter's ghostly revelations would set in motion a chain of events that would challenge the very fabric of reality as understood by the community. In an extraordinary decision for the time, the decision was made to exhume Zona's body for a thorough autopsy. The task fell to Dr. George W. Knapp, the local physician who had tended to Zona in her final moments and who had, like many others, found Erasmus's behavior during her wake to be deeply unsettling. As Dr. Knapp carefully examined Zona's remains, he made a shocking discovery that would send shockwaves through the community. Zona's neck had been broken, and there were clear signs of strangulation. The findings of the autopsy were undeniable. Elva Zona Hester had been murdered. With this grim revelation, the focus of the investigation shifted dramatically. was Zona's death considered a tragic accident or a result of natural causes. It was now a homicide, and the prime suspect was none other than her husband. The authorities wasted no time in apprehending Erasmus, who was arrested and charged with the murder of his wife. The case against him was bolstered not only by the results of the autopsy, but also by the testimony of Mary Jane Hester, who recounted her daughter's ghostly accusations with unwavering conviction. The trial of Erasmus, which took place in the local courthouse, was a sensation. It captivated the community and drew the attention of the wider region. The case was unlike any other, as it hinged not only on forensic evidence, but also on the eerie and controversial testimony of a mother who claimed her daughter's ghost had revealed the truth. Erasmus Shoe's defense team faced an uphill battle. The forensic evidence from the autopsy left little room for doubt. Zona had indeed been murdered, and the manner of her death pointed to strangulation. But what truly set this trial apart was the testimony of Mary Jane, who had insisted that her daughter's ghost had visited her, revealing Erasmus as the murderer.
dramatic and unprecedented move, Mary Jane was called to the witness stand to share her eerie experiences with the jury and the court. Her testimony was delivered with unwavering conviction, her voice unwavering as she recounted the ghostly visitations and the damning accusations made by Zona's spirit. As she spoke, the courtroom held its collective breath. Some jurors exchanged skeptical glances, while others watched Mary Jane with a mix of fascination and apprehension. The trial had ventured into uncharted territory, where the supernatural met the legal system. The defense did its best to discredit Mary Jane's testimony suggesting that her grief had clouded her judgment and that her belief in her daughter's ghost was a manifestation of her sorrow. But Mary Jane remained resolute, maintaining that Zona's ghostly visitations were real and her words could not be dismissed. After weeks of testimony and deliberation, the jury finally reached a verdict. The atmosphere in the courtroom was charged with tension as the foreman stood and announced the decision. Erasmus was found guilty of the murder of Zona. The verdict sent shockwaves through the community. While some hailed it as a triumph of justice, Others remain skeptical, uncertain about the implications of a verdict partially based on testimony about ghostly visitations. Nevertheless, Erasmus was sentenced to life in prison, marking the end of the trial but not the end of the Greenbrier ghost's legacy. The case of the Greenbrier ghost left an indelible mark on American legal history. It marked one of the first instances where testimony about the supernatural played a significant role in a murder trial. The question of whether a mother's claims of ghostly visitations could sway a jury had been answered. In this case, they did. But the story of Zona's murder and the trial of Erasmus also lived on in the folklore and popular culture of the region. The tale of the Greenbrier ghost became a haunting legend, passed down through generations, a chilling reminder of the mysteries that can hide behind the facade of rural tranquility. The legacy of the Greenbrier ghost extended far beyond the courtroom. It served as a testament to the power of belief, the pursuit of justice, and the enduring fascination with the unexplained. Elva Zona Hester's tragic death and her ghost's testimony would forever be etched into the history of Greenbrier County, a ghostly reminder that some mysteries defy both the natural and the supernatural. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and click that notification bell. This has been Zane. See you next time.